What's up creators, I hope you're doing well, I'm Tony Fuentes. Today we're gonna to look at the seven errors that I committed as a beginner when editing photos in Lightroom. So I decided to make this video because I was just going through my Instagram photos, my old posts, and I was just looking at the edit and just what was I even thinking making those changes. So hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes and avoid these errors and also in the process, take your edit from a mediocre one into a very professional one. So let's get to it. Number one is pushing too hard on clarity. Now this applies for all the sliders, but in particular the three in the presence tab. So we have texture, clarity, and the haze. These three have a very impactful effect on the results on our image, making it very dramatic or very soft. So we have to be very careful with the amount that we introduce. In the early days, I tried to copy a bit of Alan Palander and used clarity and texture all the way to the plus 80s, plus 90s to have a very impactful and dramatic image. Now, looking back, it looks completely ridiculous. It looks completely artificial, inorganic, and it's just it's just very naive guys so don't go too high on the clarity and the texture so i'm not saying not to use these tools because they are very useful but maybe use them in smaller amounts or very focalized you can always use the brush tool or masking tools to isolate specific parts of the image that you want to pop and there you can add some clarity and texture or dehaze the worst thing that you can do is maybe you have a portrait and add some texture dehaze or clarity that will make your the portrait uh, look completely awful. All the imperfections in the skin are gonna be highlighted and that's not what you want. Number two, not preserving the highlights. Now the highlights, well, this one I take a bit from editing video, is one thing that you always want to preserve in order to have an image that has great exposure, but also great information. Now in the start, I maybe wanted to make a very dramatic image, very contrasty and minimalistic, blowing out the sky completely to make it completely white and then having the shadows with some information. And this is just completely ridiculous, guys. Uh, why not make use of the dynamic range of digital photography and preserve the highlights, preserve all the detail in the clouds or any bright part of the image to have a nice contrast, but also an image with information. There's no point in having a completely white or completely black space in your image, just taking up information. So preserve your highlights and in particular preserve the highlights when they're hitting any subject in the skin tones. Number three, we have unrealistic tone shifts. Now, this is applicable to a specific tool. Within Color Mixer, we have HSL, and in HSL, we can change the hue, the luminance, and the saturation of every color in our exposure. Now, right here, I would suggest you guys to be a bit more conservative with the amounts towards the negatives or towards the positives that you introduce in these three sliders. I'm guilty in the past of changing my blues all the way to the plus 100 towards the purples or towards the minus 100 towards the aquas. And as a consequence, my sky in my images is completely magenta or turquoise. And that isn't what you want, guys. Remember that you're editing photographs and photographs are just images or stills of the reality you captured. So if you start to change the colors in a funky way, you end up with an image which is completely unrealistic and unprofessional. You're not editing a render or an AI generated image, you're editing a photograph. Next up, grain, and in particular, know how grain works. Now grain is under the effects tab and I always like to use it to apply a bit more texture into images which are very sharp or maybe when I'm editing a retro style, just add this retro quality. So in grain, we have three sliders. We have amount, we have size, and also roughness. Now notice how in this image shot with my Sony a7 IV, 33 megapixels, you can notice how these sliders affect the image. But the same amount in these three sliders will affect an image which is of lower resolution in a completely different manner. The grain is gonna be bigger, it's gonna be rougher, and a bit more, there's gonna be more. So you have to keep in mind that grain is sensitive to the resolution of your image. So if you're editing images of different sizes, beware of grain. I need to scale it back just a bit if you're editing smaller files. Number five, we have using the vignette. Now vignette is a tool that I am guilty of using in the extremes, using it in basically every single image in the past. And I would avoid it completely. So vignette, what it does is basically darken the corners or brighten up the corners of your image, drawing the attention of the viewer into the center of your photograph. Now, the problem with vignette is that it doesn't take into account bright parts of the image, even though it does have a slider that controls the highlights. But if you have an image that has a bright sky at the top, you're still gonna see that black banding or those corners darken up in the sky, which isn't what you want. Instead of using vignette, I highly suggest you guys to maybe use gradients or masking tools or radio filters in the brush tools just to darken the parts that you want in the image and brighten up the other ones. Don't use vignette because it's very generic. Number six, I've titled it, don't be afraid of contrast. And what I mean by this is that right now in the digital photography, you can shoot raw, 
and in raw you're gonna have 15 16 or even 17 stops of dynamic range therefore it's very tempting to pull down the highlights all the way to minus 100 pull down the whites pull up the shadows pull up the blacks so you have an image that has loads more information more information that you can even see with your naked eye the sensor is capturing so much detail so it's very tempting to have a very flat exposure but i would suggest you guys to maybe don't be afraid to instead of pulling up the the shadows maybe pull them down so you have a bit more punchy a bit more natural looking contrast instead of pulling down the highlights maybe pull them up just a bit so you have a natural contrast in your image which is a lot more professional than having an hdr flat exposure and this is something that i'm just starting to get into just maybe sacrificing a bit of dynamic range just adding a bit more natural contrast to make my images look a bit more professional number seven the most important thing is preserving the skin tones so there's nothing that shouts beginner louder than changing up the skin tone. So having orangey skin tones, green skin tones, or desaturated skin tones is a no-go. So whether you're editing video or photo, this is the most important thing. And in Lightroom, we have several tools that can change up and mess around with our skin tone. We have camera calibration, we have color grading, and in particular in HSL, we can change the red, the orange, and the magenta. These three sliders, these three gammas, will control all the skin tones of all the human pop population. Whether you're black, you're brown, you're white, you're pink, you're yellow, all the skin tones are going to be controlled by these three sliders. So if you're a portrait photographer, wedding photographer, anyone that manages skin tones, don't mess around with these three and just leave them at zero, whether it be in hue, saturation, or luminance. And if you're maybe shooting street photography and there are some individuals or some faces popping up, just move them, but in, remember to be a bit more conservative with the movements in these three colors. So those are seven, but I have an eighth one, a bonus, and I'm gonna put this quote up from Frank Lloyd Wright, which is less is more when more is less. Now, what this means is that there's a point that editing just gets over the top. So when you're editing photos in Lightroom, you don't have to move all the sliders in every single tab to achieve a great edit. Sometimes you only have to just adjust a bit of the contrast, a bit of the saturation, maybe add some, a little tone shift over here, and that's all you need. The best photos that are taking on field, rarely you have to edit them in post edition. So don't ever think that having a heavy edit will always result in a better edit. Sometimes less is more. So there you have it guys, eight common photo editing mistakes for beginners. I hope you achieved some knowledge out of this video. If you did, can you please give it a like, subscribe, or share it with a friend? That really helps me out. And if you wanna watch more photo editing tutorials, check the video over here on the playlist, and also more video editing tutorials, link down here. I'm Tony Fuentes, cheers to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.